Well, welcome back. In the previous video, we talked about why you want to be first in a negotiation. In this video, we're going to talk about why you want to be specific by not using round numbers. Now, if you've ever watched Pawn Stars, you know the people that come in there are horrible at this. Let's look at some examples. I'm uh, looking to get $100,000. So I think a fair price is $100,000. I would need 100000 And my asking price is half of that. I'm asking for 100000 I'm looking somewhere around $100,000. I, I got to stick with $100,000 for the gobstopper. I think at least 100000 Okay. So how much you want? I'm looking to get $100,000. Ooh. How did you come up with that number? Well, what are the odds that all of those people just happen to have an item worth exactly $100,000? Not $99,500, not $102,000, but exactly on the dot, $100,000. Highly unlikely. Now, I, I put that last clip in there for a reason. The guy asks him, okay, how did you arrive at this, this $100,000 figure? And that's the problem with using round numbers is that it implicitly communicates to the other side that you have no good reason for the number that you came up with. It's just totally arbitrary. And therefore the other side doesn't need to take it seriously. Conversely, the benefit to using specific numbers such as, you know, $99,500 is that it in some way communicates to the other side, whether this is true or not, it communicates to the other side that you do have some foundation, some reason for this number that you came up with, and therefore it's a more powerful anchor, and the other side is more likely to give a counter offer that is closer to your initial offer. To illustrate this principle, think about this. You ask somebody, what was the high temperature yesterday? And they say, 80 degrees. Later that day, you ask somebody else, what was the high temperature yesterday? And they say 81 degrees. Now here, it's likely that you're going to assume that second person is giving a more specific answer. They both just gave you an answer, but you're going to assume that the person who said 80, maybe they were kind of rounding and they don't really know. It just kind of felt like about 80. But the guy who said 81, there's got to be some reason why he said 81. He probably knows the correct answer. He has some, some good basis for saying that. Now, the benefit of using specific numbers in your initial offer in a negotiation have been demonstrated time and time again in the academic literature. There was a 2015 study on eBay where they found that listing an item for $198 produced a higher final selling price than if they list the item for the round number of $200. Uh, in my own research in 2020, I found that if a plaintiff's attorney asks a mock jury for $497,000 or $503,000, they end up getting significantly more than if they ask for $500,000. And the answer there is that the jury just assumes there, was, there must be some good reason that this attorney is asking for such a specific amount that when the attorney asked for $500,000, the mock jurors just kind of said, well, that's just an attorney asking for a big number. They, you know, there, there's no basis for that. And then finally, in my upcoming research based on the Pawn Stars negotiations, I found that on average, somebody can get two to two and a half percent more in a final price if they use a specific initial offer than if they use a round initial offer. And you may be thinking, well, 2%, that's not a whole lot, but this is free. It doesn't cost you anything to use this tactic. Plus, this is only one tactic out of many that we're gonna go over. You know, you gain 2% here, 2% there, you know, 3% somewhere else. Soon you're getting 10% more, even for an item that's only 300 bucks, you know, that's an extra $30 for you. And again, it's, it doesn't cost you anything to use these tactics. Now with everything we're gonna learn in these videos, there's always exceptions. So here are two examples of people who used a specific offer, but not in the right way. 
I'm here at the pawn shop today to sell my Jackie Robinson Bond Bread Complete Rookie Card Set. I'm looking to get 42000 for that. How much are you looking to get? Uh, $19,211.28. Well, where did you come up with that odd number? Well, I have two boys, and they were born on the 2nd and the 11th, and my husband was born on the 28th. All right, so these two people are defeating the whole purpose of using a specific number. The second person told him, oh, it's just based on my son's birthdays. Okay, so then it's totally arbitrary, so just disregard it. And the first guy, if you notice, Jackie Robinson, famously, his baseball number was 42, so he asked for $42,000, therefore explicitly telling the other side, there's no good objective reason why I came up with this number. I just thought it was cute that it happened to be Jackie Robinson's number, okay? You want to at least have the other side think that you have some good objective reason for why you came up with your number. You don't necessarily have to, but don't explicitly tell the other side that you don't have any good reason. Now, in a later video, we're going to talk about the importance of using objective factors in a negotiation. So for now, we'll just say you do always need to be prepared if somebody asks you, where did you come up with this number? You do need to have an answer other than just, oh, it sounds good to me. You need to have some objective answer. It doesn't have to be exact. You could just say, oh, just based on what I've seen them sell for, this is what I'm asking, or I saw it sell for a similar amount somewhere else recently, that's fine. Well, in the next video, we'll talk about another way you can be specific. Uh, you can find the link to that video and others in the description below. Uh, as always, uh, please ask any questions or any criticisms that you have in the comments below. I'll be addressing those, and I'll see you in the next video.